Hi, I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 318, How to Be Happier in Your Home. Everybody can be a little bit happier, even if you've got a spring in your step. So today we're going to talk all about that, and you can find the show notes for today's episode at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 318. You know, Kelly, I just think about Pinterest and Instagram and hows and how it's such a fabulous source for information for us, inspirational ideas, just you get so many great ideas for doing things in your house, but sometimes we look at these pictures And then we look at our houses and go, wah, wah. I mean, I think there's really a dark side to all of this in that a lot of people end up being really unhappy with their homes. And I think it's just really a sad thing for someone to kind of do this comparison thing and then just feel unhappy with what they have. Right. So we're going to help you today shake that off. Everybody does it. You're not alone. I mean, gosh, you know, no matter who you are, you're looking and saying, oh, I wish I had a wraparound porch or, you know, why does she get all that natural light? Or or, I wish I had more square footage, you know, or other people that I wish I had less square footage. You know, it's the- More uh, trim around my windows. Right. Less trim around my windows. You know, (laughs) I have straight hair. I wish I had curly hair. You know, there's that. And then there's the, oh, you know, I wish I had the budget for that. But- There are, uh, you know, so much of life is attitude and perception anyway, and there's definitely a way to take in all this great information and be inspired by it and use it as a kickstart to do things in your home and make plans for the future and think about, well, if I don't have a wraparound porch in this house, then I'm going to, my next house, I'm going to have a wraparound porch. And, and turn it into positive rather than just ended up feeling, uh, you know, weary and uh, less than because you spent a session on Instagram or Pinterest. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of little things we can do to improve our experiences in our homes that will make us have a much better feeling about our homes where we're just going to feel more content and happier. And I, the thing I wanted to start with is making sure you get, keep things picked up as much as you can, because I think that is probably one of the biggest issues people have with their home is the clutter. And I think sometimes people think I need a bigger house. I need more storage when maybe the answer is just getting rid of some of the stuff. And, you know, we've had episodes before on this clutter, but I definitely wanted to include it today because I think, uh, I just cannot tell you how much happier I am with my home since I straightened up my closets and my, uh, drawers. And you wouldn't think it would make such a big difference in my happiness, but it, it, it's really made, um, Oh, it's a tremendous a big difference. difference. And it doesn't even have to be this, you know, annual or every six months, big deal and clean it all out. Just keeping up with it on a daily basis will keep your base level of happiness very high. I know for me, because I am a bit, a bit of a clean freak, what I am n- never happier in my home than when it is just freshly cleaned and tidied (laughs) up. And Mm -hmm. it causes me a lot of stress. I say to this, my girls, I mean, I just adore my girls, but uh, one is now spinning out of it, but the other one is like heavy into the teenage slob scene, just like Uh takes Uh her uniform off and it just lands where it is. And it's, it will stay there. Uh, You know, opens drawers. She doesn't shut the drawers. I mean, this is, she's a wonderful girl at all accounts, but she can't shut a drawer. Like, and I can't, I can't even go into her room sometimes. I just stresses me out. And I just like, um, are you, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying at some point this stops? Uh, yes. What happens? Did. Because I'm not sure. I've never heard of this. What happens? No, it did. It did for Ava. She just turned over a new leaf. I think because of the all the years that she just saw, you know, just like so many things. And you see them out in public and all of a sudden they're saying, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Great. Whereas, you know, a year before they'd kind of hide behind you a little bit and not <laughs> not greet someone. All of a sudden, maybe everything she saw going on in the house where there's a place for everything. I put everything away. Everything you know, oh, well, is good. clean. She wants to have a room this way. She's uh, almost the borderline fanatical about her dorm room. Oh, really? So, yeah. so I have Interesting. I have great hopes for Laura oh, as well. Oh, good, good. But okay. right now we're not there. But okay. I'm just saying, I just know for myself, if I just 
I now just take it to closing the door because I don't have an hour mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. plus to clean up in there. And I really shouldn't be my job, right? And sometimes just shutting a door is the best is thing the you can do for your peace of mind. Right, right. Uh, and I was thinking about a few rules that I've instituted in the house because it, receipts are left everywhere every time someone goes to the grocery store or the hardware store. And I'm teaching my family, you know, you don't have to set this here. You can walk a few steps more and here's the file that it goes in. And uh, of course, oh God bless you! You keep the receipts. I'm a chucker. <laughs> well, but uh, yeah. Well, it just, it just, it's just there's, yeah. They go in a drawer, but then you know later if they're not needed, they're thrown out. But it's just best to have all that because just who knows what's going to happen. You just never know. Well, but right here so- it is. The point being that if you uh, if you have to do a big purge, do it. We've talked about this before. We can reference other episodes where we talk right. about in, step by step how you can do that. But just the daily tidying up, just you know, keep going. Put it where it goes. Don't leave it on the counter. You know, if there are people in your family not playing along, try your best to get them to play along. You will feel so much better if things are where it's supposed to be. Also, so, mm-hmm. if you're a person who hasn't completely settled into your house, maybe you're thinking, this is, uh, you know, our sort of stepping stone to the next place, or I'm only renting this for six months. Hey, you know, six months of happiness is worth a lot. Um, settle in. That doesn't mean you have to, you know, get custom draperies made, but unpack the boxes, make sure it feels like a home, have, you know, don't have half of your life in cardboard. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to go back to the tidying up for just a second uh, because, yeah, we've talked about the decluttering, but to have have some daily habits that don't get you into a bind again. So I used to let things pile up that needed to be filed. So now as soon as the mail comes in, the things that need to go in the trash, go in the trash, things go in the file, go in the file. So there's no pile because I would let the pile get to this huge pile at the end of the month, it, I would have to sit there for an hour to go through it. But when I just deal with it as it comes in, that pile is not stressing me. So, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And then when the things come out of the dryer, I mean, and uh, true confession, I have stuff sitting out from the dryer from a couple of days ago. So I'm not always doing this, but I'm trying to uh, p- file, uh, to not file, to fold things as soon as they come out of the dryer. So there's just some little habits like that. As soon as you get out of bed, make your bed. As soon as the stuff comes out of the dryer, fold it up. These are simple little habits that can make you you happier as far as just keeping your house straightened. Very true. Very true. And then back to what you were saying about um, kind of getting settled in. I think sometimes people move into homes and they say, well, we're not going to be here this long. This isn't my forever home. I'm only going to be here for a year or two. And then they don't even do anything about decorating the house with this because they have this very temporary attitude. And then one year turns into two, turns into five, turns into 10, and they've done nothing. And you haven't really felt like it's your house. And so I really think it's definitely worth decorating. And if you know, for example, you may say, okay, well, I'm moving. I know I'm moving in two years. So don't spend a lot of money on things that will stay with the house, but you can still buy some bedding that you like. You can buy some artwork. You know, you know the stuff that you're going to take with you to your next house. Go ahead and you know, focus on those things, but just don't focus on, you know, redoing your kitchen or something, you know, if you know you're not going to get that money back or, you know, you're moving. So that's kind of that mentality, I think, also is part of that uh, helping you to feel like it's a home and not some temporary resting place. Definitely. I am working with a family right now and I walked into their home and I thought they had just moved in last week. Uh-huh. But they'd actually been there for a year and a half. And not only did they just have so much to purge, but they so much of their lives were still in boxes. And it, they just seemed a little stuck. So that and no place to even sit. Just, you know, they were kind of, in a sense, perched in this house. They were not really living there. So we're working through a lot of things to get them happier in their house. And and that's was so rewarding that first time I left, I, the, the wife who did not 
she looked like, oh, like shell shocked when I first got there. She looked relaxed, a little bit more relaxed anyway. And she told me she's already feeling happier. So I left, I came back the second time. And when I walked in the second time, that's what she told me. They're already feeling happier, which I was just thrilled with. See that, that clutter, it just causes stress and then living Mm -hmm. out of boxes and it just causes anxiety. And then it kind of gives you that feeling of this is not a happy place. I can't wait to get out of it. Whereas if you just say, you know what, I'm here Let's enjoy the here and now. Let's get this house, you know, to a place where we can enjoy it. It just changes your complete attitude about the house. I that what a wonderful story. No, about it's so her. true because if you if you have that mentality, like, well, you know, I'm only going to be here for this time. So, you know, so what does that mean? You should just live in an uncomfortable way for whether it's three months, six months, a year. And as Anita said, sometimes the, the you know, it turns into a year and a half or you're looking for a new place and it doesn't work out. So you've kind of wasted all that time and caused yourself to be uncomfortable at the very least and probably stressed out or having this underlying level of stress that you might not even actually be recognizing, but is for sure there. So that's just silly to do that. Well, and I was thinking too about how people suffer with having an uncomfortable sofa, an uncomfortable mattress, and how that just makes you so unhappy. And a lot of times you can go get a sofa probably for less than you think you can or a new. Now there's so many options for new mattresses, so many online options. I mean, don't suffer through this. There's probably a very uh, reasonable option out there where you can get it replaced. And if you have a sofa, an old one, you can probably sell it somewhere and make a little money to pay for the the next one. Uh, so, But that's the sort of thing too that I think makes people feel just, uh, you know, and you may not even have a kind of fully realize what's going on, but you just have a bad feeling about your house. Mm-hmm. But if it, so you, it's really important to have this place where you can sit or take or sleep and just be comfortable. Yeah. Because, you know, we are all about creating not only a beautiful home, but when we say that, we're really talking about a beautiful home in all regards, in that it makes you feel good, that it's welcoming to guests, that it's a sanctuary for your family. Now, that would be a big, long tagline to say every time. So we just say we're inspiring you to create a beautiful home. But really, all of that and more goes into uh, the spirit of this podcast. We believe so strongly that your home uh, and the decor – it's it's really about the way it makes you feel. It's sure it's about the pretties and it's about the colors going together and the flow and all of that. But why is that important? It's important because of the way it makes you feel. Psychology and mood and feeling are so integral and such a part of interior design that you you have to take that into account and how it's going to impact yourself and your family. So it's not just frivolous. In fact, it's really kind of one of the most important things that you can do is to create this space. It doesn't have to be wildly expensive and it doesn't have to have the best woods or, you know, um, hand scraped barn, reclaimed (laughs) wood floors or all that. Right, right. You know, it, it has to make you feel good and make your family feel good or whoever is living there with you. Um, So think about how does a room make you feel? And if it's not making you feel great, then use these tips. Think about other ideas, how you can make it feel great. It may just be something simple like uh, you know, getting some fresh air circulating in there, you know, adding a plant, changing the drapery so you get more natural light. Or taking them down. Or taking them down, right. Well, what about this? Because I see this over and over and over again, where things get broken and people say, I'm not going to fix that right now. You know, I'm I'm not going to focus on it. And then something else breaks and then something else. But it's something where you can kind of work around it, like it's a light switch or a lamp that doesn't work. And then you have a house full of broken things. And then people are like, that's it, I'm moving. But then they fix all the broken stuff because you have to get it fixed to sell your house. And then I just, this is what happens. Then then I've seen people say, well, I like my house. I don't want to move now. Because now all the stuff that, that was bothering about the house is now fixed. And so then they begin to love it again. 
So don't wait till you're moving to get those little nagging things fixed because it's probably bothering you more than you realize. And so go ahead and get it fixed now so you can enjoy it because you know you're going to have to do it when you move anyway. Okay, I got to go then because I got to go fix this doorknob. <laughs> so, it's so true. I mean, usually I get right on something, but the, the old, old doorknobs, there's one in um, one of the upstairs bedrooms that comes off every once in a while in your hand. And it's just <laughs> such a bear to fix it. And it just, it's really not- Has clear. anyone gotten stuck in there yet? Oh yeah. You have to go. I mean, think of this. <laughs> we have two staircases because you have to go down and then back around through and up through the staircase in the kitchen to be able to open mm-hmm. the door. Oh, so, that's funny. But it's so annoying, you know, and it's just something like, I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do that. Oh yeah, I got to do that. But you know, I have to take, it's going to take me 45 minutes or longer to sort it out again. Uh, but it happens every once in a while. Um, let me just jump back to something that Anita started saying in the beginning about the, I think maybe where she was going with sort of the comparison thing where you're looking at these beautiful things and instead of saying, oh, wow, that just filled up my tank by looking at this beautiful picture, it, it made me feel bad about what I have going on. So, right. you know, if that's happening to you, and believe me, it happens to all of us, as I said, just step away from the social media for a while. Just don't keep doing that to yourself. Like, just like, oh, let me see if I can find another one. It'll make me even feel worse. You know, <laughs> let me find something. You know, don't yeah. do it. Just step away for a little bit because then that's not healthy and it's not fun. Or um, there might be certain accounts just don't follow them or don't, or, or like you said, just take a break from social media. And if it's making you feel worse, just step away. It's, if it, it's not, that's not Listen to it. back episodes of Decorating Tips and Tricks where we're here for you and there are no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's, it's just very sad. I hear this a lot uh, from people that they just had to stop watch, you know, looking at Pinterest or Instagram because it, it was too upsetting to them. I mean, yeah. and there's some and amazing you know, houses there. Right. And, you know, I, and I hope that doesn't happen to anyone, but I, I think it has a, happens to everybody a little bit. Uh, but if it's happening to you a, a lot and you're just making you feel bad about it, step away. You don't need to do that. And, and keep in the back of your mind, if you aren't peeking and looking that, you know, people are very selective on what pictures they're taking, you know, there could be major chaos going on behind them, but they've right. created this vignette in the corner right. and they're going to take a picture of it. Well, that. and the other thing is, if you've got some photography skills, you can make uh, a room look a lot better than if you don't have experience doing that. So you may take a picture and go, well, my house doesn't look anything like that, but it may just be that you don't have the lighting right for the right. picture. But you know, with the right lighting, your your room would look just as fantastic as this room that you're seeing on Instagram. Right. So keep so in mind, yeah, yeah that it, there's a lot of tricks in people brought in fr- flesh, fresh, bleh, fresh flowers and things like that because this is their job. Right. So, so just don't take a breather yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, don't let that bring you down. It's supposed to be a place where, you know, it inspires you and makes you, uh, you know, generate your creative juices and get ideas. But if it's not doing that right now, step away. But here is something that, you know, if you are looking and if there are things that you want to do in your house, instead of feeling like, wah, wah, I'll never get to do that or I'll never have that or no, 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 have, get an idea, make a plan. Break it down into manageable pieces, whether that means manageable budget-wise or manageable, oh, I only have you know three hours on a weekend to devote to this project. Break it down in increments that you can handle and then start chipping away at whatever you want to do to your home. And over time, you will accomplish it. And But along the way, you will get such satisfaction from getting it done and from making that transformation or adding that feature to your home. And then you'll ultimately get to enjoy it when it's done. It's going to bring you so much happiness. I just did, finished my laundry room. And it was 65% done for the longest time. And it was just, you know, it's out in the barn. I didn't really need to I wasn't in there all the time. My family was not, clearly my family was not spending any time in there. It was really just me. And I was like, you know, I, you know, I'll get to these shelves. I'll, I'll make them pretty the way I wanted to, but I, not today. And, oh, you know, and then it even got to the point where it really needed to be vacuumed or the laundry was piling up. And I was just like, oh, I just don't have the time. And then I got invited to be on this blog tour for these laundry rooms. And I was like, that'll whip you into shape. Yeah, exactly. It was like someone coming over to visit your laundry room. And I thought, 
I first I was like, oh God, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to put this pressure on myself. But I said, no, <laughs> yes, do it. And I cannot tell you guys, I just like broke it down. Okay, I could get this many hours this day, this day, this day, this day. And I had plenty of notice. I was so happy with myself. I actually Aww. now go out and just look at it. Like the other day, I just left the light on for a little while. So I would have to go back out and look at it again. I mean, you know, it's certainly not the most beautiful laundry room on planet Earth. It doesn't have any natural But light. it's making it's, you happy, but right? the fact that I accomplished it and it finished it and I, I, you know, I made it the way I wanted to, I'm so pleased. It makes me really happy. So you can find that even on a small scale. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quinn's. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. I have an I, some ideas for just some simple things, small expense that... I found with me have made me so much happier. So uh, what I was thinking about is how we do these chores every day, like washing the dishes and just, it can just be kind of meh, meh, meh. But I've noticed that- I when love the, washing the dishes. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, you probably, do you, no, are you joking or you don't? I don't okay. really like that. Well, I like uh, organizing weird. the dishwasher though. I do enjoy you're, that. You're a little on the odd side. I oh, thought yeah. she might. Because she does like to clean. But I've noticed like maybe the sponge is starting to not look so good. No, I don't like that. No. And then I get more. And then I'm just like, oh, I'm touching this gross sponge. Blah, blah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's another thing. Oh, I, I just, bet Evie does not touch a gross sponge. No. No, no. Oh, well, she's got gloves for everything. <laughs> uh, she has <laughs> the latex gloves. Gloves. I think she uses them every day for something <laughs> that she might have to touch that might be gross. So, but anyway, I'm just thinking, you know, the change out your sponge. I mean, if it's gross, change it out. And I got some really cute 
dishwashing gloves with kind of a little ruffle on the end of them. Oh, stop. stop. At, at, at TJ Maxx. But, you know, I found some on Amazon, too. I'll include the link for them. But I thought, you know, it just little things like that that you feel like, okay, what is it, 10 bucks and these cute gloves? And then it just makes me a little happier when I'm doing the dishes. And, and then I went with something a little more um, environmentally friendly and sustainable in going with some bamboo-handled uh, sponges to clean out glassware and some a bamboo handled dishwashing brush and it I honestly when I'm doing dishes it makes it so much more pleasant for me and for Evie to make her happier I got her a pink handled brush and so she's ah. just like so excited about it and then I got her a pink handled a duster oh. for her bedroom oh my and, and she's like. Oh, I can't wait to use this. <laughs> yes, my plan is working. Oh, whoa. Well, wow. I'm telling you, I yeah, if, with the kids, and my kid's in her 20s, but, you know, we couldn't get her to walk the dog to save our lives. And uh, I thought, I'm going to get her this cute dog walking purse to put her phone in. A dog walking purse. I Yeah, well, it wasn't expensive, but I got her that. I thought she's going to want to dock the dog to get the cute purse, to use a cute <laughs> purse. But you know what? I my, my, fail, my plan failed because I didn't realize you could use the purse without walking the dog. I was going to say. See, there I was mean, a flaw. It was there the was dog a flaw. attached to the purse. That was the only way that was going <laughs> to no, no, no. There was a, a flaw to my plan. So yeah. then I re- came back, thought about it some more, came up with another mm-hmm. plan, and I got her. It was vastly on sale. It was very cheap. Um, compared to the original price, but I got her a designer uh, dog leash. Oh. And I am here to report that dog has walked every day now. Oh, my. I Just am not she joking. she gets to hold the leash? Wow. You would not think it true, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> you would not think Evie was that shallow, but maybe she is. <laughs> I'm just saying it works. Just joking. I no, love that no, Evie no. girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I'm just saying, but it, it works for it works for people. It it works for me. It does the yeah. same thing for me. I, I'm enjoying doing the dishes when I've got my fun, you know, pretty things. Right. So, you know, put your soap, uh, your dishwashing soap in a pretty container so that you're not looking at an ugly container sitting out by your sink. You know, just put a little extra effort into these things so that, you know, so you feel like you're, it's a special time, whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree. And there are little tricks that you can do too. Um, you may have a lot of really heavy furniture, like sort of clumpy, uh, you know, like furniture that comes to the floor where it's really solid. Do you know that if you add in some furniture with legs or switch out the clunky furniture, you are going to get a sense of more space, a little bit airiness, Mm -hmm. right? Lighter, brighter. It's going to change the look of your room simply by the leg of your furniture. But you're going to have to dust under it now. Well, then you have your pretty duster and you're all excited. (laughs) Okay. Something like this and also creating little nooks. Now, Anita and I joke with you guys, oh, we'll set up a chair with like a little poof with a design book on it. And we Mm kind of laugh Mm -hmm. like, oh, but we have no time to ever sit there. Okay. Even if you don't sit there, create these little nooks because I'm going to tell you, every time I walk past one of my little, and I'm using nook in like air quotes because it could be Mm -hmm. a corner. It could be, sure, like a, a... a a certified nook like under your staircase. It could be just a use of a a little space in your bedroom in the corner. So like we were just talking about our, one of our listeners, Amy, and she created this little nook in her bedroom just with a chair in the corner Mm -hmm. and some pillows. Create these little spaces in your house. I'm sure no matter how small your house is, there's going to be a space to do something like this. A little destination, a little oasis that you know, you, you're striving to get there, to take a look at your magazine or, or to, you know, look at your emails or just chill and relax or meditate or think about happy thoughts or something like that. Have a look around your house and see if you could create something like that. And I bet you can do it from stuff you already have. You know, drag over a little side table, uh, you know, pull up a little chair, get a throw, uh, you know, even if you got to pull one, a seasonal one out, you know, just feel it out. And if you like it, then maybe you update it with, you know, new items that you, that you then go and buy specifically for that space. But little nooks do a lot for your home to make it feel uh, welcoming and cozy and add a little bit of happiness to it. 
Well, and while you're talking about that, I started thinking about your bedroom. I mean, making that into a retreat and not treating it like it's a laundry room or a catch-all. I mean, I would respect your bedroom as much as it's the living room in your house. This is your special space and this is where you need to be sleeping. So if as you walk in your bedroom, you feel stressed because there's piles of stuff or exercise equipment that you don't use, it's it's not going to be a pleasant experience. So, I mean, I would clean clear out any extra clutter um, and just make sure it's very peaceful and restful so that you can go in there and, and feel like even if you don't have time to read a book, as long as it's relaxing going in your bedroom, then to me, then, then you've accomplished something. Anita, that is so important. And for years, especially when my girls were, you know, littler, I used our bedroom. I knew what I wanted out of our bedroom. Uh, I wanted it to be a bedroom sanctuary. I wanted to feel relaxed when I went in there, but it just became this catch-all. Exactly what you're saying. There were piles of laundry on the bed that I had good intentions of folding throughout the day, but then I forgot they were there because I was downstairs, you know, making snack after school snack and whatever. And then I went upstairs to go to sleep and all the, the, the clothes were there. And then all the clothes were there and then I had to throw them on the floor and then the clean clothes are getting tossed on the floor and then it's just this cycle. And so I said to myself when we moved into this house, okay, everybody's, my kids are old, a little bit older. Um, You know, they're also not going to be climbing into my bed to watch Barbie movies like they used to in our other house, which was cute and charming and all of that. But that's not really, in fact, one time I came home and there was one of the neighbor kids in my bed too. And they, all three of them were watching a movie together. And I was like, (laughs) wait a minute. my room. But, you know, and I said to myself, this is going to be a sanctuary and it took some time, but I really have done it. We, uh, you know, uh, it's personal preference, but we have no TV and we do use the iPad for watching TV in bed. Uh, but the laundry does not come up there anymore. I don't have random children from the neighborhood in my bed anymore. <laughs> um, you know, it, I shut the door. I don't even like, I try not to let the dogs even go in there. It's, Ah, you know, even once in a while, if I'm taking a shower, the master bath is off the bedroom. I have a candle. I even have a pretty, uh, matches like someone had given me years ago, like, like not just a matchbook, but like an actual case. It's made of like, it's lacquered or something like that. Oh, you put I've seen refillable those matches in. Mm-hmm. And somehow mm-hmm. just having those makes me feel so snazzy. And I like the candle with those. And then I tuck it behind there so you can't see them. And then I'll have the candle on while I'm taking a shower, which seems like, oh, that's so luxurious. I mean, you know, what happens next? Does she have an in-room massage? No, probably while I'm in there, I might you know, take the scrubbing brush and like clean the tile, but I still have my candle <laughs> but going. You know, just, but she likes that. You don't have to I do like that. that. I That's do like just that. what she's doing. But you know but, what I'm saying? You know, it's just, it's yeah. stolen moments. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be a whole day of spa treatments. It's like I put this candle on and it makes a big difference to me. It right. makes me well, happy. Well, and, or, and essential oils, mm-hmm. all these things to have a lovely scent in your home. Yeah. What about playing some beautiful music? Yeah. I mean, and now you can just do the Spotify or, you know, whatever music, um, Pandora on your phone. I have that one woman band, Alexa. She plays anything. Yes, else. exactly. I mean, all these things are going to make you be able to enjoy your home so much more. What about having friends over more often? And maybe it's a potluck thing where you're yeah. not having to do all the cooking. Oh, with the potluck. You know I Oh, I know you don't. I know. That makes me very unhappy. <laughs> That's you. I know. I know. But, or I know. But I'm just saying. Other it, people. I, some other people, people like that. Some people like it. Yeah. Personalize your space. We reference this a lot. But this is really important in the happiness realm. It's going to make you happy to look at pictures of your friends, your family, your kids, your pets places you love, people, pets, places, all these good things. So add some personalization to your home. Even if you're going to be just there for a little while, make it part of you. Yeah. And I was thinking too, what about uh, a gratitude journal? I mean, that's probably something that's going to make you happier in general. But, you know, these are just kind of things or maybe things that you appreciate about your house. I mean, there's just so many things. It's It's really all about... Uh, changing your environment as much as you can to make it as happy a place, but also it's changing kind of how you feel inside about your house. So I think it's kind of both sides, uh, inside and outside, but it's just so important to have a house that welcomes you, that's, that's cozy, that's inviting for you. It's so important 
to have a place where you can appreciate it. So part of it is changing your attitude about your house. And part of it is doing as much to your house as you can to make it as much like what you want as possible. Yeah. And Anita touched on it. We talked about it in the beginning too. It, you know, it is your attitude too. So, you know, shake it off. If you're feeling bad about your house, shake it off. And these are great concrete tips, things that you can really take to the happiness bank and, you know, get, take some happiness out with it. These things will work. So tidy, personalize, create small nooks, you know, have a plan for something you want to do, break it down into manageable pieces. Uh, if you can change out your furniture to have more furniture with legs and less clunky furniture. Uh, what am I missing? And, you know, make your bedroom a sanctuary. All that. Well, I mean, think you buy some special cleaning supplies or something so that it's a more festive experience for you when you're cleaning. That was one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Key, uh, fixing things that are broken, getting rid of the clutter, kind of cleaning as you go. Right. All those right. things. Right. The, the tidy habits. All good. So do you, besides your roughly uh, dishwashing gloves, do you have a, a new crush this for this episode? Well, actually, I have a wonderful experience that we had uh, just selling uh, or just buying a car. I should say we're getting ready to sell our car to them uh, with CarMax. Wow. So uh, I just thought I'd give them a shout out because we had a great experience. Evie bought her car okay, there. I don't think car. anybody, I mean, maybe other people with CarMax, but like, no, like I selling and buying a, a used car. I had a great experience. How many people have you heard say that? So, well, wow. I know, but that's why I wanted to mention yeah. it because I mean, they're not, they're not sponsoring this episode, but I just wanted to give a shout out. And my, my man, Robert at the uh, Southwest Freeway CarMax here in Houston, uh, was just wonderful to work with, and uh, it was a great experience. So we're getting ready to sell her old car there. Uh, That's terrific. On, yeah, I know, this week. So, yeah, so check them out in your area. And congratulations to Evie for her new car. She sent me a picture with her in front of it. So cute. A um, couple of things. I do have a crush, but mm -hmm. I want to mention to everyone, and we keep forgetting to tell everybody about this, we started to put together a Decorating Tips and Tricks email list. And mm -hmm. we don't know when we're going to get around to sending out an email <laughs> to you guys because, you know, you listen to us and that's great too. But we have so much to share uh, besides even the show notes. And sometimes there's special things that come up that, you know, we want to get out to you right away. And this would give us a way to do that. And so many of you email us anyway. Uh, you know, we maybe we would feature some of the photos that you send to us and we'd be able to share it with everybody else in that way. Because in our show notes, we really, you don't, uh, there's not a place to include photos, but if we did emails, we could do that. So, long way of saying, please sign up for the Decorating Tips and Tricks email. Uh, it may come to you in a month or so, and it will be very infrequent. But uh, suffice to say, we will get in touch with you when we've got some really good things to share, whether it be uh, brand discounts or questions or some other things that we're involved in that we thought that would be of interest to you. So we will have the link to sign up for the Decorating Tips and Tricks email in the show notes. And as far as my crush, now I tried to turn Anita Jean onto these a while ago, but I don't think she's uh, gone for it, but maybe she will now. It's these uh, Italian suede driving shoes, like driving uh, loafers, moccasins, if you will. Oh, well, oh, no, I'm very interested in those. No, I know but you're interested, but you haven't done I haven't it bought yet. them yet. Yes. No, I haven't and bought you them yet. Keep, I'll keep you posted on uh, if they have any sales because I get their emails. So anyway, I don't know how I learned about this company. It came across and normally I don't buy a pair of shoes online, but I had always wanted a pair of really nice black suede loafers. And you know, there's driver shoes, but you you don't just drive in them. You do whatever you want in them. Mm -hmm. But it's the company could, is M yeah. Gemi. So M period G E M I, and I'll leave the link. And the ones that I love are the uh, the Felis suede loafer. Now these are handmade in Toscano, Italy. So you, it, so the price point for them is a little high, but nowhere near what this kind of shoe would cost if you went to a retail store to get it because they're taking out the middleman. So not Did only you get some yet? Of course I did. I could not talk about them without knowing. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> okay. I have them on right now. Um, they are fabulous. And you could even use them, dare I say, for indoor shoes like Anita does, because oh. you could just say, I'm not wearing this outside. They come in the most fabulous colors. And again, of course- Oh, those are beautiful. Not, I'm looking at them right yeah, now. Yeah, they're not mm-hmm. sponsoring us, but you know, maybe they will someday. I do like shoes. the colors. Well, and they have a leopard print. They do. And they have all kinds of different shoes and boots, and they have high heels and stuff like that. But this is the one that I got, and I absolutely love it. Now, I would not- even though Anita and I have the same shoe size we found out last week, I would never let her borrow these because they kind of mold <laughs> to your foot. You know, oh. I mean, if she really needed them, I would give her one. But I'm sure you would. They mold to your foot. So it's so fabulous. Like it's truly, fa- they feel better every time I put them on. But here's the thing too. They come in the mail in this beautiful box and then it has a tag on it with your name handwritten on them. Oh, stop it. Yeah, by the person who made them. Okay. Oh. Yeah. That, these are definitely worth it. Yeah. Their their leather pump mules are gorgeous, too. Yeah. They have a bow on them. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. So these, the yeah, ones not, I not love a, have yeah. um, 742 uh, five-star reviews. So I'm not alone. Wow. But anyway, they're fab. Yeah. I'll put the link in the show notes. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt mm-hmm. and we have a listener question oh exciting okay jackie w jackie jackie hey is, jackie yeah yeah she's a frequent flyer to decorating tips and tricks questions and we love her questions they're always really um sort of broad base where they could help mm-hmm. a lot of people. So uh, Jackie's uh, question today is about flooring. She does say she's uh, kind of a carpet girl and that's okay, Jackie. We're not anti-carpet girls. It's just, you know, we really like the hardwood, I, you know, where we live. We both live in warmer clients. We have dogs and all this sort of thing. But So she's saying with the hardwood, she's thinking about changing her laminate to hardwood. And I guess she's mm-hmm. got carpet and maybe the bedrooms and things in her house. So she's asking, number one, 
what do we do about area rugs when we've got them down on the hardwood as far as cleaning? You know, do you go around them? Do you have to go too far under them? Do you remove the rug? What do you do? And um, do we have any suggestions for going with the hardwood, particularly in a kitchen or a dining room? Okay. Well, I wanted to start with the last question that she mentioned about using them in the dining room or the kitchen. I think they're fabulous in a dining room. And I don't think there's any issue at all using them in a dining room. And I do like the look of a, an area rug under the table. Uh, so the main thing with that is to make sure you get a rug that is going to stand up to food that might be dropped on it. So you don't want a cotton rug. You're probably going to want something like wool or one of the indoor outdoor rugs or something that's going to repel, uh, you know, any kind of foods with oils or anything like that on them if, if it gets dropped on the rug. So I don't see that being an issue. In the kitchen, um, you do have to be careful. We've had uh, situations where the power's gone out and ice has melted on the floor. And I've had a couple different floors in kitchens. I've had the the laminate. I've had engineered wood and uh, solid hardwood flooring. And I recently had a situation where somebody was in the refrigerator, a guest, and spilled about a cup of water on the hardwood floor right in front of the refrigerator. And, but now it, the solid hardwood floors, I think are going to handle that better than, than the other flooring types. Cause I've had issues with, with the laminate and with the engineered wood, getting that amount of water on it and being uh, permanently ruined. And those, that little section had to be replaced. But with the solid hardwood floor, I have um, reclaimed hardwood, so it's very old. But I think it's similar with brand new, but the solid hardwood, it kind of buckled up at first, kind of uh, curled. And then as the wood dried out, it just went completely back into place. So I mean, you, so it's going to respond if it does get a cup or more water on it. Uh, But if it's solid wood, it should go back to its regular shape after some time. Now, if it's more water than that, I don't know what would happen. Um, But I like the look of the hardwood in the floor. So I would definitely do that again. Um, But if you're, if that's would be a, if that's going to, if that would bother you, then I would probably not put a hardwood floor in there, but the engineered wood, I don't think is going to hold up as well to the water. That's, that's my feeling about it. My experience. I don't know. What's yours, Kelly? Yeah, no, that's really good advice. And I do have hardwood in my kitchen and my dining room. I have it throughout my entire house. Uh, both floors are hardwood, both levels, I should say are hardwood floors. And, um, I have not had any problem and I have a very active kitchen. We eat in there almost every night and, and every other meal is usually had in there. The dogs hang out there primarily. I don't have a problem with it at all. And it leads out to our backyard. So people are in and out of those doors all the time. There is the option of those tiles that look like wood. And let me tell you, they are pretty fantastic. Oh, that's right. That's a great option. Yeah. I've got a few samples of that because we thought maybe we would do that in the barn, but it was just too big of an area. It was just going to be too expensive. So we just stuck with the cement and and stained the concrete. But you know, had it not been a budgetary issue, I, I probably would have done that out there. It looks so good. So I would try that if you're concerned about it, um, especially if maybe you you know, tracking in some sort of, you know, muddy, I've got weather going on, which we don't really have too much of except the rain. Uh, Maybe look into that as an option. And as far as cleaning the floors, my bigger area rugs, I usually just roll them back, particularly the sizals, because I feel like the natural sizals, they they do shed, especially for the first couple of years you have them. So I like to vacuum under them. So I just fold it back on one side and vacuum. And then maybe if I'm going to do a, um, you know, maybe if a wet cleaning as well, I'll do that, let it dry, fold them back, and then do the other side. If it's a smaller one that I can just roll up and take outside, I'll roll it up, take it outside, shake it, clean the floor underneath and then vacuum the whole area. So that's the way I handle it. I know what you're saying, Jackie, that somehow the dust and the crummies somehow, how do they get under the rugs, but they do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, they do. They do around the edges. Yeah. And, uh, 
our uh, sponsor of Decorating Tips and Tricks, Aunt Fanny's, uh, they're not really a sponsor today, but uh, of course, we still love them every day. <laughs> and I use Aunt Fanny's all the time to clean my floors. That's how I first got introduced to them. And then they ended up becoming sponsors of Decorating Tips and Tricks because I think their products are amazing. Uh, I love the lavender vinegar floor cleaner in particular, and I use that on all my hardwood floors. Yeah. Well, that sounds... Yeah. So go for it. Send us some pictures, Jackie, if you if you decide to do it. We'd love to see what you're up to. I know. Exciting changes coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else? I'm Helen? good. Yeah. All right. Well, I, as always, had a blast hanging out with you today. And thank you to listening to our podcast today. We love it. And remember, if you have any questions you want to submit to us or any tips or any episode ideas, please send us an email to decoratingtipsandtricks at gmail.com. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.